I know there are some diehard Bitcoiners out there, but do you believe in Bitcoin so much that you would sell all your worldly possessions for it and trade them in for BTC? Well, my next guest did just that. In 2017, when Bitcoin was worth about $900, Didi Taihutu, his wife, and three kids sold their house, cars, clothes, everything in the Netherlands for Bitcoin. Now they travel the world living the digital nomad lifestyle as their Bitcoin stash grows in value. So welcome Didi and family, welcome to the show. All right, so I mean, you must be quite content with what many back in 2017 would have considered a very risky bet, seeing as how Bitcoin has climbed a bit since the $900 uh, level you purchased it at. Yeah, hi. First of all, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, of course, it's it's beautiful. You know, we we always thought Bitcoin would go up, um, and um, we always said, let's see what happens till 2021, and see if Bitcoin then can reach to 100k. And at the moment, we are perfectly in line with uh, what we expected at that time, uh, for almost five years ago now, uh, when we started to travel the world in a in a minimalistic lifestyle to uh, hold as much as possible Bitcoins during those five years. So I, I am curious, how did you, I understand you got into crypto. I've seen you with the, the shirts, the HODL shirts and everything. But how did you get your wife and kids to sign up onto this? You know what it is? Um, I experienced a lot of stuff in life. And one of the things was uh, losing my father when he was 60, uh, losing my mother when she was 48. So I, I understood that the living life part was more important than the accumulating of wealth. And we wanted to lead by example for our children to show them that it would, life should be about accumulating happiness instead of accumulating health. And that led all up to, um, to the decisions we made. We all were already wanting to be minimalistic, traveling the world, exploring the world, instead of running the hamster wheel 24-7 in a system that we didn't want to support. We wanted to support the decentralization of the world uh, and the decentralization of money in the form of Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies. So for us, it was just a natural step in our life that we needed to take to stay happy. So what have you done? I love that, by the way. I, what, so what have you done since 2017? Where, where have you gone? How do the kids like it? Are they going to school? How, how do you manage a family life on the, on the go like that? It, it's like we, we, since 2017, we traveled over 42 countries at the moment. Um, whole mm -hmm. Asia, South America, Europe. We went to Australia. And we, we just enjoyed life and, and spread the worth of Bitcoin. Everywhere I come, I try to spend my Bitcoins. Um, we already don't have bank accounts now since uh, 2018. So that's already three, now four years that we don't have bank accounts. And so we need to spend our Bitcoins. And that to do that, we need to convince some people. So we just travel talk to people, try to spend Bitcoins, try to educate. Um, of course, we also earn Bitcoins by YouTube and all that stuff. And most of our profits uh, we share with poor people. So we support a lot of charities and that's what exactly makes us happy as a family at the moment. <laughs> you don't have any bank accounts. So are you relying on crypto apps to convert to local currencies, that kind of thing? Uh, it, it depends. You know, in the beginning, it was a lot of local Bitcoins. Then there was no KYC yet on local Bitcoins. You could do really nice OTC deals. That was not the most safe way to do it. But, you know, that was the only way in the beginning. And now, of course, you have uh, all the debit cards, crypto.com, and you can all name them. You know, the, you can use them. But um, it, we have been proving now for four years, you don't need a bank anymore. It's, it's not necessary. You can pay everything with there, cryptocurrencies. Are there any hiccups though? Because I imagine that it must be difficult. Not, you know, it's, it's difficult to not, there are not Bitcoin ATMs in every country or, you know, everywhere that you may be. What, what are some of the challenges? The challenges is um, to educate your children how to um, work with Bitcoin. For adults, it's easy. You go online and you, you buy some coupons and you use the coupons uh, to buy groceries or whatever, or you buy your uh, Happy Meal, <laughs> whatever the kids want. Uh, for kids, you know, normally kids grow up with a bank account and then they get allowance and that allowance they can spend for whatever they need. And I think that is the biggest disadvantage. Um, our kids don't get an allowance in dollars or euros, only in Bitcoins. So we need to be very creative as the new forms of banks, the decentralized ones uh, with the debit cards, they are not allowed uh, for kids below 18 years old. And my oldest daughter is 16, the second one 14, and the youngest one 11. Um, so that is a little bit difficult. How do you manage your kids to, you need to spend their money in a shopping mall. Mm -hmm. and, um, but we always find solutions. 
Okay, so I, I imagine that you have to find solutions. You have to be resourceful about yeah. working your local Bitcoin connections. I, I you know, I, I don't know it's, how you manage to convert in local currencies consistently. Uh, it's so but, easy. It's so easy. Is it's, it? It's like everywhere, okay. everywhere in the world you have OTC dealers. You know, you just go into the okay. social media <laughs> groups. You ask for an OTC dealer. You connect to the dealer. You drink a coffee and you give him your bitcoins and he gives you the cash and from that currency of that country and you can spend cash if you want but that's that's the easy way you know i, I try to find the hard way i want to spend bitcoin <laughs> i want to support the whole bitcoin revolution i want to support the miners the community and i right. think the only way is by spending it as well and what's what's been the easiest country to do all this in terms of you know you've traveled the world do you find what are some of the easier countries to travel in living on Bitcoin versus some of the most difficult ones? I think Asia is a little bit more uh, easy than, than Europe. Uh, Thailand, for example, I could spend like all my life almost on Bitcoins there. Um, Mexico, we just came from four months of Mexico. Mexico was very easy to spend my Bitcoins. Restaurants are accepting Bitcoins, hotels accepting Bitcoins. I, conv I convinced a real estate agent in Playa del Carmen, who now has like more than 200 houses for rent and for sale for Bitcoin. So um, I think those two countries, Mexico uh, and Portugal as well, are, are really easy countries to live on, on cryptocurrency. And then there are these small towns in the world like Rovereto in Italy, which is amazing. There's more than 40 shops that accept Bitcoin direct payments. And then you have Slovenia, Ljubljana, which is the, is the capital of uh, Slovenia. And there they accept like Bitcoins in more over than 400 stores. So uh, you could buy like 99% of the needs directly with Bitcoins in uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia. Really, really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Do you, do you, well, since you don't really live anywhere, you don't really pay taxes anywhere. Is that another added benefit? So you know, we are digital nomads, you know, so we travel. We are registered as homeless people in the Netherlands. And um, <laughs> uh, if we need to pay tax, we pay tax in the Netherlands at the moment. And that's capital gain tax, which is 1.3% on cryptocurrency, which is not a lot of tax. Um, now we are going through the whole program in Portugal. Um, we now just registered in Portugal because Portugal has a 0% tax on Bitcoin. So if we want to cash our Bitcoins during this bull run, then Portugal would be um, the place to cash out the Bitcoins. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I I'm curious, when you sold your house and all your belongings, how much was it worth back then? I, we never um, gave price how much it exactly was, but it was a few hundred thousand K. A few okay. hundred thousand dollars, cool. sorry. <laughs> so yeah. Are you able or are you able to share how much it's worth now compared it compared to back then? Yeah, it's 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 a decent amount, but we are not in it to become millionaires. Um we are we doing good, but you know, we give we give we believe in energy, we give away a lot of to charities, we build the schools, we build um uh, orphanages, um, we do share our capital and you know, when you give you get back and um yeah, I, I don't plan for the future. I'm not sitting on a bag of billions to wait till I'm 60 to spend them. You know, I live life now to the fullest. That is how we lead by example for the kids. You need to live life now, not when you're 25, 40, 50 now. Uh, so you spend your Bitcoins. And, um, but again, we are doing good. Um, we are filming a documentary with a huge company, one of the three biggest uh, in the world. And in that documentary, we will be disclosing um, exactly the amount of Bitcoins and everything else. But um, till that point, <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, Are you concerned at all <laughs> about security, you know, in terms of um, how do you, like, where do you store your crypto? I understand you rely mostly on cold wallets and and in terms of, you know, where do you store it? And, and are you ever concerned with your own personal security being your own bank? No, it's like we don't live in fear. We, we chose this to take these steps in life because we were sick of the life we were living. And we chose to never live in fear again. And we want to live to the fullest. And if you live in fear, you destroy all the dreams that you should be chasing. And uh, that is why we decided not to live in fear. Like 70% uh, of our uh, Bitcoins is in, sorry for all the noise, that's the kids shouting. Oh no, that's great. <laughs> and, it's the, the crypto uh, lifestyle. <laughs> 
yeah, seventy percent of our uh, crypto is in hardware wallets, and um, that is very safe. It's cold storage. About thirty percent is in hot storage, uh, which is that we use to trade, to stake. Uh, I have bots trading, you know, and I do some investments in small crypto startups. So, um, you know, we we just diversify our portfolio so that we don't feel. Uh, unsafe. If they want to rob us, you know, we are not as rich as Elon Musk or one of the other billionaires. They should be robbing those people and not people like us that build schools and uh, help poor people all over the world. So no, nah, no fear there. So, so you're known for putting it all in Bitcoin, but I understand you also, as you mentioned, you, you have some ETH, you have some Litecoin. Are there other coins you're into? Are, are, what's the next big thing? Are you into DeFi? Yeah, of course. I'm into DeFi. You know, I'm. It's 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 not NFTs. that I day trade anymore. So, so NFTs. I have a lot of NFTs. I'm, I'm investing in NFT companies. One of the news one I'm looking into now is Niftify. For example, it's a startup project, but they are doing really well with onboarding uh, famous people that will launch their NFTs over there. So uh, you know, I just keep an eye on the market and I mainly invest in those projects that provide a solution for something in the future that we will run into with blockchain. Like last year in January, February, I started to invest in Polkadot and Chainlink because they were providing the solution to get offline data into the blockchain to connect the data. And then you know, yes, in a year time, this industry will be growing. There needs to be data that is offline in access or SQL databases that needs to be transformed into a blockchain databases. So which company is going to solve that problem? So I thought Chainlink, Polkadot, all these guys, and then you invest in these startups. So I'm not like, I don't invest in pump coins, but I invest in projects that really provide solutions for the future. So I'm always looking a few years ahead, what problems will we run into, which projects are solving that problem. Interesting. And I'm just curious because you have a family, do you homeschool your kids? Like, do, or do they go to schools in local areas wherever you travel? Uh, we started with unschooling because we we were not like happy with the schooling system because we had the feeling that they were being prepared for the past. We want to prepare the kids for the future. So we started with unschooling to de-stress them from the normal schooling system. And then we went uh, into homeschooling and now we combine homeschooling with um, online schooling by a school called Galileo. It's built by digital nomads for digital nomads where the kids check in every day and have a 30 minute uh, lessons or guide lessons by teachers that help them to understand stuff that I don't understand. If they have questions about the stars or if they have questions about ghosts, whatever, you know, <laughs> they can go to a teacher. Sure. If they have questions about bitcoins, they can come to me. 